Hello everyone, welcome to the ArcTech webinar Wednesday. The topic for the today's webinar is AQWire. It's a software used to test the communication protocols. My name is Raj Kumar and I'm working as an application engineer with the technical support team of ArcTech. Today in this webinar, we will learn how to do the communication testing, and all the protocols that are available on the ArcTech relays. Uh, in order to go through uh, this webinar, I'm using a relay and I need this AQWire tool and activate software through which I'm connected to the relay. Let's go to the presentation. So there are different types of protocols used in the communication and some of these are mentioned here are available on the architect relays. I have divided them into two categories, serial Serial way of communication and Ethernet communication. Serial communications are IEC 101, IEC 103, DNP3, Modbus RTU, ISPA. And the Ethernet communication, the most important one, IEC 61850, DNP3 TCP, IEC 104, Modbus TCP. And there are different medias for the communication, such as using copper, optical, radio extra, and there are different topologies used for the communication, such as multi-drop, free, redundant ring, etc. Nowadays, Ethernet is more used. What is AQWire communication testing software? This software is developed by Arctic Relays. This software is used to test all the communication protocols. Those are available in the relay. This software is designed to test all the series, AQ200 and AQ250 series of ArcTech. And this software can also be used to test some other uh, devices as well, like from some other companies. This software is available on the ArcTech website. If you visit on the page and then you have this document on software, it's free to use and anyone can download it. Here we have the Ethernet based and serial based communications protocols are defined here. I will go through each one by one. So, when you are connected with a relay, you will have an interface and we will be jumping through these two menus all the time. So, it's better you get familiar with these. When you are connected with the relay, you have on the left hand side, you have this communication tab. If you go in the communication and protocols, you have all the protocols available here. NTP, IC61850, uh, like highlighted in the red. And then on the second right hand side, you have this another tab that you go in the tools and communication. Here you have all the settings of different protocols and their uh, information like uh, their holding registers and the data is available there. So you can go there and check it out. We will be jumping through these two menus. So if I can show you through the relay, this is one of, one of the relay AQ200 with which I am connected. If I go in the communication protocols and here you can see I have all the protocols available here. And another tab was here, if I go in the tools, communication, and all the communication protocols are available here. Then, so first we will test this Modbus TCP communication. So in order to test this, you go through the communication tab, protocols, and Modbus TCP. As you, see, as you can see in the picture, and you enable this particular protocol. Now here you need to note one thing. Uh, Arctech is using two series, AQ200 and AQ250 series. For AQ200, you can enable Ethernet protocol, any one of them at a time. You cannot keep uh, multiple protocols to be enabled at the same time. So since I'm using AQ200 series here, so I will be enabling only one protocol at a time, which I'm going to test. 
and then I disable it and then I will go to another one. If you are using AQ250 series then you don't need to worry about it. You can uh, enable as much protocol as you want. And then here you have a, a software AQ wire. So you can download it. I can show you if you go on the Arctic page, Arctic website and in the softwares you have this AQR installer available here. So you can download from here and once you open it, it will look like this. In this software you have all the protocols available here. Now I'm going to test Modbus. So protocols and I went in the Modbus I have enabled it and I have assigned the IP port 502 this one this number is by default you can change this to any number you want there is the range given so it's 502 now you have all protocols available here and I go in Modbus TCP the data that you need to place here is here you place the IP information port information you don't need to touch this Modbus address. When you place this IP address and the port, IP address should be the IP of the relay. So the IP of the relay is mentioned here, you can see. So I place the same IP and the port number and I try to connect. Once you are connected, this status tab will turn into green. It means you are connected with the relay. With all the protocols, there are three major things that we will be testing today. One is to read any data from the relay. Second is to write any data to the relay. And third is to control the breaker, that's control the object from the relay. So uh, when you are connected here, you can see here, this is the read tab. Here you can read the data. Any data that you want to read from the relay, just you just need to have the address information you place here and you can read the data. Similarly, here, the second part is the write data. Here you can write the data that you want to change to the relay. You command to the relay to change it. And here you have to, you have a control to control the object or the breaker. How to know the address information? The easiest way, if you are connected with the relay, you go to the tools, communication, and then here you have a Modbus map. So here you have all that data given. If you see here, uh, this left hand side is the holding register data. Here you have the parameter, what parameter you are going to read. Here's the length, what is the length of the parameter that you are going to read. And then here you have axis, axis and you see here it's written R and at some places it's written as RW. So the R data is readable data, that data you can only read, but there is this RW, that data is readable and writable. So you can read that data as well as you can write the data. And here you have the info tab where you have information, what data it is about. For example, if I want to read some measurements data, for example, so I have some holding registers here and I want to read the energy values for example so it's 1209 up to 1219 so I go in this tab I put 1209 and I want to mirror 10 more values and I press request I have the data available here now I know this data is of length 2 and it's a floating data. So you have an option here, you can select the data, what type of data you are reading. So if I select the floating, then I will have the energy values here. So this is the way how you read the data. Now I want to read something that's more realistic. If I go in the Modbus map, for example, uh, this is NOC1 condition, this is uh, overcurrent protection stage 1. Uh, it's read data only, so I can only read what's the status of the relay. 
And here is the data. For example, it's normal. It shows zero when it's a start one, trip two, and block three. So now I would I want to read this data. So the holding register is 1261. 1261 one data so now I'm reading reading this data there you can see there is option of single read if you press the single read then you can read the data once after that if the data is changing at the relay there is uh, no information will be updated but if I uncheck this single read then I'm reading this data all the time so I want to change the status of the relay and see how it changes I go in the protection and yep I change the status from normal to start the status change to start and you can see I'm reading here start if the status change to trip it should in the relay it shows trip and in, on the uh, communication tool I can read it's in trip mode and similarly if it's blocked the relay goes in block mode and it moves to 3 so basically you can read the data you can read NOC 1 if you have this holding register information you can read what's the status of it is it in normal mode in trip mode or in a start mode so this is how you read I make to stop this data and then now I want to write something to the relay. Again, first I need to know. I go in Modbus map. Okay, here I can see the holding, reg uh, holding register of this remote setting group change. For example, I send a command to the relay to send the, uh, to change the setting group. So it's 1259. And here, whatever command I send from 1 to 8, it will change the setting group to that particular setting group. And if I press, if I send the command as a 0, it will, it will show there is no any setting group, none setting group selected. First, I will go in the relay and I will see which setting group is there. Now it says that the remote setting group is none. So I write command change it to setting group 1 and I request it second tools communication mod bus map okay it's 1259 Sorry, it's 1259 and I request it to 1. Now here you see the setting group changed to 1. So from here, right command, I can change the setting group to any setting group I want. For example, if I want to read it to 8, I uh, change to setting group 8. Now what I do is, here I'm giving a right command and at the same time I'm also, I want to read the same status also so I request the read so what I'm doing here is I give a command to the relay to change the setting group to setting group 7 it changes the setting group to 7 here you can see on the relay and then from relay the software reads the data and it updates here that now setting group 7 is activated so I make it to 0 so it will jump to none yes so this is how you can write the data. You have all the holding registers available here. Whatever data you want to read and write, you can do that. You, can, you have to just see that if the data is writable or not. And now last thing is to control the object. Here you have the object and here you have the events. If you enable this event log, you will have all the events available here. Like I was uh, putting this NOC1 on, off and so, the events being generated there now I need to control the breaker normally you 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 need to have a breaker available but since here I'm just testing 
and I don't have any breaker available. So I have simulated a breaker in the relay, in the relay logic. If you go in the tools, logic editor, I have a logic available here. So when I give a breaker close command, uh, this logic will be set and it will activate logic output one. And when I give an open command, then this logical output two. And if I go in the controls, objects, I have an object available here and it's the circuit breaker and I have placed logic output one and two data here. So I have simulated the breaker and now I can test it. And one thing you need to note when you are giving any command to the breaker to operate, to get it on or off, you need to put this uh, relay in the remote mode. If the relay in the local mode, it will not accept any command from this card or from this communication tool. Now it's in remote mode. If I select here, you have all the breakers available, the objects available. If I select object two, it says unknown status because we don't have any object two or object three, but when I select object one, it reads from the relay and it says that the object in the open mode, it's open. And you can see also here on the relay. So I select the object, I give a close command, object is closed and it's updated on the relay, object is closed. And also in the events, you can see that object one is closed. And if I give an open command, object is open and you can read on the relay, object is open and here you have the events also. So this is how basically you control the object. What else? Yes, here in the type, you select what type of data you are reading and then you assign according to the data. And also you can save the data. For example, when I was changing here the setting groups, I can save this data. When I press this, this, is the, this data will be started saving in, in the memory. And if I change the status of this data, for example, normal to trip start mode and normal to trip mode. Yes, it goes to the trip and data is changing here. So if I stop reading this data and I disconnect and here you have a open file location. So if you open this, you have the information is stored here. If I open this, yes. So you have this data here. Here it says the date, time, what holding register I was reading, 1261 and this status was first one and then two. So it, it records the data every one second. Whatever status you change, it, it starts to record. So in this way, you can record the energy values or any status, whatever you want to monitor, you can assign the holding register and you start to store the data. So yes, this is all in this Modbus TCP communication. This is how you uh, read the data, write the data and control the object and also store the data. Yes. So this was Modbus TCP and now we will go to IC 104 communication. I will go in the communication Modbus, I will disable it. Then I will go to IC 104, I enable it. And one thing you need to note when you enable IEC 104, you need to wait at least 30 seconds so that the communication is starts to develop. Okay. Now I have disconnected it and I go to IEC 104 tab. Same thing I need to do. If you see here, you just enable it and then you have the IP port information that you need to note and then this common address. The same thing you need to put here, IP address, port information, address information. And if you press connect, 
So it's status turn to connect it and waiting for the initial data. So it will try to connect. We need to wait for a while. Yeah, now it's connected. When you are connected, uh, this tab will show ready and this tick mark is green and then you have the data here. It's the same thing, you have all the similar data, just the interface is a bit different. But here you can see this part is the single data, single data, and this one is the double data. I will let you know what's the single and double data. Here you'll, you will have the measurements, and here you will have the uh, counters. So single data is like the status of the digital input or any protection function. Double data is the object data, like the status of the breaker. And then here you have the measurements. Measurements can be currents, voltages, power, energy. And then here you have the counter. Counter counts how many times digital input is on, off. Here you have the events, similar way. Here you have uh, uh, read command. You can put any of the holding register information and you can read the data. So uh, this is IC104. Similarly, when you are connected with the relay, you can go in the tools, communication, and IC104. Here you have all the information available here. This one is single data. If you scroll down or if you extend it, then here you have double data like the breaker status and the measurement values. So yeah, this data is here. You can read any of the data, whatever you want to read. And the important thing here to notice is the same data that you are going to read here is also available here. So you can read that data. You don't need to go like find every single holding register, but you can go in this and you will find, if you know the holding register number, what data it is, you can read here. Everything is already given here. Only thing that you need to note is, here you have this interrogation command, where you can group some certain amount of data. For example, uh, here you see they are all grouped zero. For example, if I want to read digital input five, six, and seven, then I, I will give them a group number. It can be one to eight. And then I want to read the object one, and then I want to know some measurement quantity. So I give them, it's an editable value. So here you can write whatever. For example, if I put one, one, one. So these all are like three digital inputs are under group one. So if I write this to the data, if I save it and write it to the relay, and when you are using this interface, you select group one. Here you have 16 groups available. So you can divide all the data into 16 groups. For example, if I, if I give any data to group one and if I send it, which I haven't set now, but if I save it for group one, then only the data that you have assigned to group one will appear here. So this is basically a way to group the data together. So you don't have all the information, all the unnecessary information here. But so it, in this way, you can group this. And in this grouping, you can group only three, single, double, and measured quantities. But for this uh, integrated total value, you need to use this counter interrogation. And here you have five separate groups for this particular data. And here you have the these holding registers where you can write the data to zero R1. And then here you have the object control. So I select object one, and this is the holding register for the object. It says now open. If I give a close command, it's closed and it updates status to two. And again, if I want to open it, if I open it, it's changed to one. And here you have the events being generated. So this is how you test IC104. Basically, it's the same. And you have its holding register data available here in the tools, communication, and IEC 104. So yeah, 
Now I go in the IC104 and I disable it. Yes, it's disabled. And I go to IC61850. And I enable it. Uh, once you enable IEC 61850, you need to wait at least 60 seconds or one minute. So after, yeah. So you need to wait for 60 seconds. After waiting for 60 seconds, you need once you press connect, it will turn yellow, and it you need to wait. 10 more seconds so that AQ wire collects the data from the relay that you have set in IEC 61850 settings. So until one minute, I'll go through tools, communication and IEC 61850. Here you have SCL set file where you have all the information there. We have a webinar how to set this IEC 61850 settings. I'm not going in detail with it, but here this data is set by default. So and the abbreviation of the data is given here. You can read this, what this each abbreviation mean. If you go on the website and in 200 series here, you have 200 IC61850 signal list. So if you go in the signal list, you will have the data what each parameter means. So yes, close this and I check the one that is passed. Okay, this one is disconnected and I go to IC61850 and I try to connect. So it, it waits for 10 seconds to read the data from the relay. And once it's connected, it will turn into green if it's connected. Yeah. Now we are connected with the relay. It shows connected and here you have all the data. So uh, these are the abbreviations. Each data is explained what it means, but if I say here, this one is the object. So if you click here, you have the object and then you have the position. And here you have the operation. Make it small so you can see both thing. I go in the control. Remote mode and object is open. I want to read this data. So what I will do is I will press add to poll. Now this, this is here, if I press close and I say operate, the breaker is operated, here its status is changed, I can see in the relay it's closed and if I want to open it, I put it on open and then I press operate. So breaker is operated, its status changed and it's now changed to open. So yes, you can control the breaker. Remotely. So this one is the object. And this one is, for example, I3MMXU1. This is the uh, phase currents. Here you have the phase current, phase A. And then here you have magnitude and angle. So now it's zero because I'm not injecting anything, but I can read if I'm injecting something. And similarly, here we have this NOC1. For example, I add this to poll, open poll list, I remove this one. So uh, this one is the start signal and this one is the trip signal. So I can read here what's the status of the NOC1 So, yeah, I go in the protection, so yes, now it's in trip mode, it shows that the trip is 1, if I set it to normal, 
this should turn to zero. Okay, I need to press the start polling. Okay, now I can read the data when I press the start polling. So it reads the data all the time. Now I make it to start. So you will see this start signal is on. And if I put it to trip, this trip signal will be on. And you can see it also phase wise, for example, phase A start, this phase A should be on. And if I want to see phase B trip, then this should be on. So yes, you can read the status of the first stage over current protection. And when I'm done with the reading, I stop polling. And yeah, so this is the way you can read any data you want. Here you have this frequency. So you can, when you, when you are doing the settings for this IC61850, you can put whatever data you want to read. Uh, and then with this software, you can read the data. You can control the object as well. One more thing I need to show you here. If your object, if you want to control the object and you are really in remote, a relay is not in remote mode, then it will not operate. For example, I add this to polling. So it's here. Now I want to control the object. I see from the relay. Yes, object in open mode. I want to close it. I press close, it turns close and it shows our relay in the remote mode. If I change the relay mode to local, for example, now it turns to local and if I try to operate it, I press open and I press operate. It says operate failed, blocked by switching. So it cannot operate because it's now in local mode. I make it back to remote this change to the remote mode and if I press it close, yeah, it's in close mode. So if I press open, I operate it and yes, I can open it. So this is how you test this IC61850. I disconnect it and I disable it from communication. I see 61850 and I disable it. And the last uh, Ethernet communication remaining is this DNP3 TCP. I enable it. Once it enable, I go in DNP3 mode. I place the IP, port information, slave information, and master information. You can see this from here that you need to put this data here and then you try to connect it. Yes, now we are connected. When it's connected, it shows open and you will see the data here. It's almost similar to all other communication protocols. First, I will control the object, but since you need to press choose here and you select object number zero. Number zero refers to object one. Now we are connected to this object. If I press a close command, object will be closed. If I press open command, object will be open. And here, whatever the data changes, it will appear with the timestamp. For example, it, it says object one is off now at this time and date. And it says object two is intermediate because we have not simulated any object object two here. So it just shows the status intermediate. Here you have the binary data. Here you have the analog data. Here you have the uh, breaker information and here you have the counters. And here you have the events. Basically you can read all the events. And here it shows that what the command you gave to the object, is it successful or not? So yes. But now, for example, you can say that you can see here only two objects. Where are the rest of objects? Basically, you can, uh, this data can be set by yourself, how to set this. 
So you need to connect with the relay and you go to DNP3, tools, communication and DNP3. Now if you compare this, this thing, this thing, this is the same like binary input data here, analog data, object data and this command and control. So basically you can add any data that you want to add here. How to add the data? Normally it's there is nothing here for example in binary inputs you press a plus sign and you click on this what data you want to read for example local and remote it will appear here if you connect press another plus sign if you select it for example digital input 1 digital input 2 digital input 3 in this way you write the data and then you have the save option you save it and then you can give a command to write it to the relay once you give the command it will write to the relay and that data will appear here so this is how you put the data and in my case I have placed only this one and two objects object one and two that you can see here and then you have counters here and the two counters here so the counters will count how many times this for example this first one is digital input counter which I saw from the map. So if I control digital input, for example, it's normally open to normally close. It's counted it, it's one time, and it's at this particular stamp. If I go to digital input two, if I change the polarity, Ah, okay, it gives the status here. If I make it normally open and if I make it normally close again, the counter makes this too. So you can, so this is the counter that reads from the relay. So this is how you have the similar data available here, but here you can select what data you want to basically read it. So you can put it here and then you can read it. So the NP3 is done. Now we are done with the serial protocol communication. Uh, sorry, Ethernet communication. And now we will see the serial port communication. Okay, we are done with IC61850. For in order to do the serial communication, you need a USB to serial adapter, so that that adapter make a connection with the USB and the relays RS485 port. So in order to do this communication you need uh, the serial adapter in between. For example, in this test, I am using uh, Moxa U port 1150. This has been tested with the serial communication. And this is the serial communication terminal information. When you are testing the serial communication, you go in the communication connections and serial communication one protocol here you can see the highlighted one and then here because in the serial communication there is no IP address so there is no way to know by the relay which communication you are going to use. So here you, you will go and you select any of the serial communication that you want to use and you will see all the serial communication protocols are available here. So I go to the relay. all the communication protocols I keep disabled now rest are disabled and I will go in for example this is Modbus TCP I will go in Modbus RTU this is Modbus RTU is the serial port communication and the slave address is 1 now I'm connected with this Moxa switch so this one is disconnected so in the Modbus RTU, you have to select COM, what type of, uh, what port is connected. For example, I will go in the device management. And if I go in the ports, it says Moxa USB is connected to 
communication one, com one. So I have selected here com one, and here you have the serial parameters. This this same data is available here. So the same data is available here. This bit rate, this one, data bits, and parity, and then this stop bit what protocol you are using. For example, I have selected Modbus RTU and here in this tab you see all the protocols available here are serial port communications. So I select Modbus RTU I'm going to use and then protocol Modbus RTU and slave address is one. I put the same data here, COM1, unit ID is one, serial parameters are here and then I press connect. So it's immediately connected and here you saw the events start to appear and this communication protocol is exactly same as Modbus TCP. So only you have the different port of communication otherwise the option are same. If you see here it's completely same. So this is the same thing where you read the data, write the data and control the object. So it's 100% same, just the way of communication using different type of connection. So I disconnected it. And this IC101 is same as IC103. It's exactly the same, only you have to define the port number and this parameters, rest of the things are same. So if you go here, if you want to test this, you select IC103 and then you connect it. Basically it's same as 104. Once it's connected, whole data will appear here. Yes. And then this IC101, well IC101 and IC104 are exactly same. 103 is a little bit different, but basically it's the same. If I go in tools, communication, 101, the same data is here. The one we use for the ethernet, same will be used for the serial communication. And same way you control the object here, and here you have the general commands. And then what's left? This DNP3 TCP and DNP3, they are exactly same. So basically whatever data you select, once you are connected with DNP3, it will up show the same data. It's the same communication basically. Only a little bit different in the SPA. In the SPA, once you are connected, you have holding registers are a little bit different. If you go in the tools, communication, and if you go in the SPA map, you can see here, yes, in the SPA you have the holding register with the alphabet and a number. Otherwise you have the same information what this is, this is object or measurements data and what it is about and what type of data. So here you select the alphabet and then you write the number and then you select if you want to read how much data all data or a range of data and then you write the number and then you request and then you can read the data. Similarly same data you can write from here and then you can control the object. I'm not going in detail of it basically it's exactly the same as others. So I think we are done with all protocols so far. Yes. So you need to uh, note one thing that you will select with which uh, communication, serial communication you are using and you need to select here. So that relay should know which type of uh, communication you are going to use because you will do all these through the same serial port. Yes, after that I will have a little information about this goose sniffer. Basically, Goose Sniffer is a software 
that we are going to develop it. It's, it's still in the process of developing and will be ready at the end of the year. Uh, Goose Sniffer, basically a software, it's other than this AQ wire. This software is used to read the real-time data, communicate with the relay and read the real-time data and plot it on the curves. Uh, it's used by one of our customer who wanted to read the generator commander data, the generator com commander excitation control using this goose sniffer, where he was reading the data, all the real-time data coming from the generator to the relay and it's reading it and then it gives the command accordingly so that uh, it can increase, it can change uh, any of the signal that he's going to read, for example, excitation. So once the software will be ready, it will be published on our website and then we will have maybe have a webinar on it in future. And thank you so much for listening and the questions are welcomed. If you want to ask anything, you can put your question. It will come to us and we will try to answer it. And in case, if you want to ask something later on, you can reach us through the Arctic support portal by visiting our Arctic website. Thank you so much for listening. See you again.